Gifted six children. Gifted with abilities far beyond the ordinary. I give you the Umbrella Academy. Half yesterday trying to get the damn. Does anyone wish to speak? He was a monster. <laughs> Yeah, this. It's very breathy on the bits. Nice to see nothing's changed. I jumped forward and got stuck in the feature. Do you know what I found? Absolutely nothing. When's it supposed to happen? In eight days. We need the full force of the Academy. Bingo. Oh, you gotta love family. The Umbrella Academy is the latest series about to hit Netflix. Netflix, it's all about a dysfunctional family who needs to save the world in only eight days. No big deal. Oh, no big deal. Two of the stars joining us now, Ellen Page and Emmy Raver Lantman. Thank you so much for being here on our lovely Love Nest Fest. This is I, amazing. It. Right? Yeah, yeah. It seems like a Valentine's Day kind of show that, uh, that you guys are in right now. Oh. Isn't it full of romance not and love? So and, no, not at all. Yeah, not even not close. It's a, little, it's a little chillier than that. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about the Umbrella Academy because there's so much going on to it, and I feel like there are so many layers. So let's back it up and say, mm -hmm. why should someone watch this? Because, like, who would be a fan of this show? Hmm. I think it's really cliche to say, but I do think it's a show for everyone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And I think it's something really new and original, and I, I, I think that's both why, yeah. why we wanted to be a part of it. Yeah, absolutely. My, I, my parents are huge fans um, <laughs> already, and I, I, everyone our age and we are huge fans of the show, and I think it's, it's funny, it's quirky, it's dangerous, it's, it's got a little bit for everybody. Yeah. And it's a bit almost along the lines of 24, something like that, where it's only eight days that yeah. you're basing this on. So yeah. it's a different concept and not spread out. you got to jam it all in in those eight days for the episodes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was the funny, the interesting part was, you know, we took seven months to shoot it, but it takes place in eight days. So we were, like, stuck in this eight days for seven months. We're like, can I just <laughs> get a different dress to wear? I've been in the same dress in the same day for three months. <laughs> Your characters are very different. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so let's talk, uh, let's start with you, Ellen, because I guess your character would sort of be the most... When we talk about these powers that they have, I guess the most normal or most close to at least human character that we can say. Yeah, so Vanya's um, upbringing was actually quite difficult because she was the, the one of the seven that didn't have any sort of power. And, and she was treated quite horribly because of this. The father kind of constantly reminding her <laughs> she's not special and she's ordinary really being separated and isolated and ostracized from, you know, this superhero team, and they were child stars, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now where we find her as an adult, she's actually really, really struggling. She's mm -hmm. struggling with depression, anxiety, feelings of just, like, worthlessness, and a big part of her journey is, is sort of peeling through those layers. Which yeah. is something a lot of people, though, can connect with. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think um, people will really be able to relate this character to varying degrees. Uh, and um, I felt very, very grateful to play her. It's one of my favorites I've ever gotten to play. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's big. And Emmy, for you, you kind of mm -hmm. keep the flow of the story going, right? So yeah. how, um, tell us a little bit about your role and how you kind of tie everything together. Uh, so I play Allison, uh, number three, The Rumor, and she, um, when this family kind of broke up and went their separate ways 12 years ago, she became a really famous movie star, she got married, she had a daughter, um, and we, in the first episode, we pick up with her, she's going through a divorce, she's fighting for custody of her daughter, and so she returns to the Umbrella Academy with the rest of her siblings, um, and kind of realizes that that might be the only family that she has left, mm -hmm. and it's not a good place to be. They're not getting along. They all haven't seen each other in so long. And um, so I think she is single-handedly the one that's kind of trying to put the family back together and rebuild bridges that I think she unknowingly kind of destroyed, mm -hmm. like her relationship with Vanya. They were never close growing up, even though they, they, were the, they were the only sisters. But I think it was the distance of her not having the powers and not being a part of the Umbrella Academy and going out on fighting missions that kind of kept that distance. And I think that's a huge regret in her life. So she's trying to find a sisterhood there. And then she's also trying to kind of herd the wild cats that are her brothers. 
<laughs> and kind of get them all in the same room, cooperating and kind of, you know, get, getting the family back together. It might task. be easier to save the world, actually. I think trying <laughs> yeah, to if get they would just back listen to her, she maybe <laughs> might know what she's talking about. Maybe. <laughs> but uh, and, and do you like having a power? Would you want to actually have a power after doing this? <laughs> I think I think in you know initially you're like yes of course I want to be a superhero I want to fly I want to time travel I think but seeing the struggles and what this family has gone through and how growing up with powers and growing up in the limelight has done to them I think um, it comes with a great responsibility um, and I unfortunately for the Umbrella Academy I don't think any of them have figured that part out yet so I think um, with time and diligence and and care I think. Being a superhero is awesome, but I think you have to you have to you have to put in the work. It's not yeah. it is a it is truly a gift to be respected and not to be abused. It doesn't come easy. Yeah. Uh, Ellen, I want to ask you a little bit about your uh, latest appearance on Colbert because a lot of that's making a lot of headlines, yeah. and I want you to clarify too because um, your appearance was very emotional uh, for you, and it had a, a clear message. But I'm going to give you this opportunity to really talk about what that message was because uh, some people are sort of taking it in a different direction. Um, yeah, which is which is typical, I think, when you are uh, a member of the community and simply are advocating for equality. Um, what I'm talking about is the fact that LGBTQ people, particularly the most marginalized in our community, really face so many difficulties every single day. And this is something people need to understand. And I made a show called um, Gaycation, for example, where um, I went to different countries around the world and explored the LGBTQ culture in that country, the challenges, the um, unbelievable courage and resiliency of so many activists, and just individuals who are living their day to day. And also, we focused on the, the issues for individuals in, in the United States. And people need to understand that it is life or death. It is. Mm -hmm. Now, we, we like to think we're doing quite well up here. Thoughts on Canada and how it is, where it's at, what could be changed, what still needs to be changed? Well, typically what needs to be changed is we, we see a lot of progress and um, that of course is beautiful and the fact that marriage equality, you know, became legalized when, well, I was, what, sorry, 16, you know, 17. Um, but we have to remember that a lot of the time the most marginalized in our community are left behind. And it's really throughout history been trans women of color who have fought, who've been, who've, who've been on the front lines and who have risked so much. And a lot of the time uh, are left behind and deal with, um, you know, so a uh, risk of violence and, uh, and uh, uh, so many struggles every single day. And because of our lack of representation in media, because we don't learn about LGBTQ history in schools, here we are. <laughs> and let's talk about this. Let's learn. Let's love. This is the day that's supposed to be about love. Yeah. Um, so there's a much bigger conversation. So thank you so much for that. Um, I got to ask you, because it's Valentine's Day and we were saying hello to our couples hanging out over there. Mm -hmm. Valentine's Day, big for you? Fun? I, every day is Valentine's <laughs> yeah, Day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you just love you to the people you love it, it, every day. You. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love that. Okay, so with that, the Umbrella Academy, by the way, it's not necessarily about love. Well, kind of in a way. There's love. In a way. Family love. Family, family love. Big family love, yeah. right? Big family love. Family's it, tricky, but family, you know. And it's yeah. not yeah, always You love family. them regardless. Family's family. <laughs> Netflix tomorrow. Check it out. More information. Breakfasttelevision.ca. Thank you so much. Let's head upstairs now. Thank you very much.